Faith Community Church. I am Jason. We are continuing our walk through the New Testament together. Today we are in Romans chapter 11. So if you uh, have already read that, that's good. If you haven't read it yet, you might want to pause the video uh, and read Romans chapter 11 right now. And what we see uh, throughout Scripture is, is God using people and sometimes groups of people to accomplish his purposes. And Romans chapter 11 is referring to a promise uh, that God made to Abraham all the way back in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. It says, The Lord said to Abraham, Go from your land, your relatives, and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse anyone who treats you with contempt, and all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. Through you, And so here we see the start of God's promises to the nation of Israel, right? Abraham is the father of Israel. His children uh, and, and generations that follow make up the nation of, of Israel. And what Romans chapter 11 uh, refers to is sort of what happened from the initial promises uh, that God gave to Abraham for the Israelite people uh, through the Old Testament, uh, and then how they have then what they've thought of Christ. And what what Paul is referring to uh, here in Romans is that most Jews presently reject Jesus as the Messiah, but that does not mean God is not faithful uh, to his covenant and to his promises. The first 10 verses of Romans 11 are talking to us about God's uh, preserving of a remnant. You know, there's always going to be a remnant of Israel. There's going to be people who uh, are of that nation, who are faithful, who accept Christ as their Savior, who repent of their sins, believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and God is preserving that remnant. Paul himself says, look, I'm, I'm a part of that remnant. I'm a part of the people that are of the, the nation of God, and yet I have accepted Christ, and I am in true relationship with him. But that's not the case uh, for most people, um, most, most Jews, uh, most Jewish people. And so Paul explains the hardening of the hearts. Why, why are the Jewish people, why do, why do they have hard hearts towards, towards Christ? And Paul explains uh, that, that is to allow the Gentiles, right, those who are, are not Jewish, to come into the family of God, into the kingdom of God. But he, even Paul says this, this isn't going to last forever, right? He says in, in verse 12, Now if their transgression brings riches for the world and their failure uh, riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their fullness Bring, right? So right now, things are not looking good, but in the future, Paul says, look, the fullness will bring riches uh, to the world. Verse 15 says, for if the rejection brings reconciliation to the world, will their acceptance mean, uh, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? Verse 24, for if you were cut off from your native wild olive tree and against nature were grafted into the cultivated olive tree, how much more will these, the natural branches, be grafted into their olive tree? tree. And so we have to, to keep some things in mind, right? If, if you're a Gentile and you're watching this video, there's some things that you have to, to keep in mind as we are, are learning from the nation of Israel, as we're learning from uh, them, their successes, their failures. Uh, we need to keep some things in mind. One is, is we cannot be arrogant. Right, we cannot assume like okay, things are going well right now. They're gonna go. They're gonna go well, uh, always in the future. But you have to be on guard against uh, that. Verse twenty-one uh, says, "But if God did not spare the natural branches, He will not spare you either. Therefore, consider God's kindness and severity, severity toward those who have fallen, but God's kindness toward you. If you remain in His kindness." Otherwise, you too will be cut off. And even they, if they do not remain in unbelief, will be grafted in because God has the power to graft them in again. And so God is, is, is t telling us, Paul is, is teaching us through this, this chapter in Romans to, to look, let's, let's be wise here. Let's not become arrogant. Let's not become prideful. Let's not have any, any hint of racism as, as we're better than this other group of people. Like, you cannot have that. Uh, Paul is, is very clear that that what happened to the Israelite people could could also happen uh, to us and and of course we don't we don't want that another thing we have to remember is that that God's not finished right he's not finished uh, with the the story of his people verse um, 29 uh, tells us 
that since God's gracious gifts and calling are irrevocable, right, the promises that he made are, are irrevocable, they're not going to be taken back. I don't know exactly what that's going to look like in the future, but God is faithful to his promises. Uh, the promises that he made will eventually come to pass, uh, and the same way is true for, for each of us. The promises that God makes for us will come to pass as well. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is in, in verse 11. It says, I ask then, have they stumbled so as to fall? Absolutely not. On the contrary, uh, by their uh, transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make Israel jealous. And that's how we are to be living. Uh, the the people of, of Israel, God loves the people of Israel. They're created in his image. He has special uh, plans and purposes for them. And we as, if, if, if you're a Gentile, if you're not a Jewish person and you're, you're watching this, you are to live your life in such a way that, that makes Israel jealous. The, the joy that you experience in your relationship with God, the, re, the, the, the satisfaction that comes with a life lived with him, the, the, the freedom that comes with living outside of the law and in the grace of God is, is very sweet, it's very pleasant, and we are to be living in such a way that makes those people who are, are not repented of their sins, have not accepted Christ, jealous so that they say, I want that too. Right, so we we need to be living not just uh, for ourselves, but also as an example for others to follow. Hopefully, this helps you understand Romans chapter eleven just a little bit better. Thanks so much for watching today. God bless. Mm -hmm.